Welcome, bounty hunters and Star Wars fans alike. It is All Fets Are Off with Jason, the Tuscan Toast in Miami, Florida, and Brian in San Antonio, te Texas, the charismatic Carillion who is having technical issues right now. So everyone just gets my beautiful face right now for uh, the next few minutes until Brian can get up and running and then we'll get him onto the show. Uh, we didn't want to start too late. This is uh, All Fets Are Late. Um, this is the weekly Star Wars fan show that we talk Star Wars and other nerd things that I deem appropriate and interesting for me um, at the uh, much uh, frustration of Brian, but that's okay because I do a lot of these things just to kind of see his emotional reaction and it's fun to see. But thank you all for joining in and checking out the show. Uh, so we were off last week, uh, unfortunately. I wasn't feeling too well, but I'm back. I'm up and running. It wasn't COVID related. Um, I'm here. I'm great and ready to rock and roll. Um, so we have some really big news today. We're going to talk about it. I'm going to wait for Brian to get on. Uh, we're really excited to talk about it. There's some great stuff going on. Um, and we've had some uh, really good shows in the past, you know, talking and speculating about what just happened today. So I feel a bit clairvoyant and uh, we're going to be able to, to bring something up that I called uh, several weeks ago. So uh, you're welcome, Star Wars fans. Um, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll wait for Brian to get on and talk a little bit more about it. So um, while I'm here killing time, uh, we have uh, had about 21 shows. This is our 21st. And uh, to include our specials and our May the 4th, and we did, a, we did a, go, a, a Gone Hawaiian for no reason whatsoever when COVID started, just everybody was feeling kind of down. So we decided to do a little something to kind of lift some spirits and uh, get everybody up and going. Uh, so we're, we're glad to have everybody on board. Uh, we're really excited about the show. Uh, Bad Customs is now our sponsor. We're sponsored now by, by Bad Customs, and uh, we are really excited to have them. You can check the link out on the description for uh, all of Brianna's amazing uh, artwork on her tumblers and things like that. So mine is, you know, just plain Jane. I haven't had her, uh, you know, make this one all pretty like yet, but you know, she'll get these tumblers and, uh, you know, do anything you want pretty much to them, uh, customize them and make them yours. Uh, so definitely check out her Instagram and her Facebook and hit her up if you're interested in uh, getting some of her products. We had her on the show last time. Uh, very sweet lady, uh, pleasant to talk to. It was uh, so nice to have her on board, and uh, we're really glad to have her now as a sponsor for All Fets Are Off. So check out her. Um, so uh, we'll hope we're hoping to have her on board again sometime soon. Uh, we don't know when, depending on her uh, on her on her schedule and availability. And we'll chat. We'll talk. Uh, so uh, I'll go through what we're going to talk about this week. I don't remember what we did last week, or I'm sorry, the week prior to that. Um, so forgive my uh, my bad memory. Uh, but I'm sure Brian will come in. He'll talk about it because his memory is a lot better than mine because he pays attention and has a lot more interest in me. So um, we're going to talk. Uh, the sequel trilogy is going to stay in place, sort of. We kind of go back and forth. Well, I go back and forth because they kind of split it up between legends and canon continuity is just kind of thrown off and it's splintered and brian and i don't really see eye to eye on that but i think that's what makes the show interesting is that we never really do uh the plot details for uh rian johnson trilogy is starting to emerge he's going to have his own trilogy we, we talked about this earlier um and john boyega he he wants more and i think he should um not only has he proven uh, to be a very good actor, but he's proven to be a, uh, a very big voice and uh, a, a very good model for, uh, for the community as well. Um, Filoni is not done with those lovable clones. We'll talk a little bit more on that. And George Lucas entertains doing his versions of episode 7, 8, and 9. And since I don't have Brian on board right now, I feel like I can get in my own opinion without him getting really upset about it. So, shh, don't tell him. I am not really a big fan of the sequels. I'm sort of a fan of the prequels, not really. Mm, I'd go back and redo them all, but mm, the sequels, other than Rise of Skywalker, eh, I wasn't really a big fan. And for those of you who really follow the show, you know I hate The Last Jedi. I mean, 
loathe this thing. If I could erase it from existence, I would. If I could get the two and a half hours back from watching that, I would do that, but I cannot. So um, that's two and a half hours of my life that I regret wasting on this horrible movie. Um, and if anybody um, really actually sees this show um, who worked on the, on the movie, I know you guys worked hard. I, I know. Um, I'm just, it was just not good. I'm, I'm sorry. The acting was fine. Um, it was a Star Wars movie, but it just didn't really make much sense. So we're going to leave it at that before I get myself in real trouble. Who knows? It'll happen probably. Somebody's going to see this and say, we're never going to go on off. That's a We're never going to be a guest over there. <laughs> so we're going to be shut down before we even started. But uh, again, hey, this is our 21st show. So whatever. We've gone this far. And it's only cost us, I don't know, the amount of a camera. <laughs> so uh, I've had this thing for a little while, this little blue Yeti. It seems to be working okay. If everybody can hear me. Except last week. When I started the show and I didn't even have the camera on, or I'm sorry, the, the microphone on, <laughs> nobody can hear me. So we restarted. We did the show over again. We started from the very beginning. So uh, thanks for calling us out. I don't remember who it was, uh, but somebody called us out, and I really appreciate that. So, um, so it looks like Brian is still having technical issues. Um, I'm starting to run out of things to, to, to BS about, but... Uh, <laughs> We'll, we'll, we'll figure something else out. If, if somebody out there who's watching right now in the chat, um, you want to talk about something, uh, bring up a topic and, and, I'll, and I'll talk about it. Now, I'll, I'll put in my two cents in. Um, although my opinion means very little and, and rarely makes any sense at all, I'll try my best anyways. So, um, I haven't really been following a whole lot what's going on in the, the Star Wars world. Um, the pickings are kind of slim because of COVID. A lot of productions have ceased or have scaled back. So uh, what's happening right now and what I'm seeing is uh, Disney, along with a lot of other uh, Hollywood production companies, are kind of you know either going back to the drawing board or they're kind of doing things that they could do with not a whole lot of people, reshoots, things like that. So that we can try to have some content once everything opens back up again and going to the movies is the norm on a Friday night or Saturday night. Um, and we don't know when that's going to be. COVID has really taken a toll on people, on the economy, on our way of life. And we just don't know when it's going to stop. Now, I prefer to err on the side of caution and wait and do the things that our medical professionals tell us to do and chill. And that's what I would prefer. And I like to think that I comply with doctor's orders since I come from... Uh, you know, a, a lineage of some medical professionals, I prefer to listen to them. Um, so even though it kind of hurts the wallet for a lot of people, kind of hurts the livelihood for a lot of people, and it's sucky, and I'm sorry, but we really need to do what's best for everyone's health so that we're alive and healthy and we can continue on and recover from this. So, and hey, we got Brian back. So... Just give us one second here, and uh, we'll get him back up and running. Ah. <laughs> uh, Brian, you there? Uh, yes and no? I can, I... It I, certainly doesn't appear so. You were there for a second, and uh, now you're not. But uh, <laughs> let's... Uh, Let's uh, let's see. Well, well, hopefully, well, we'll wait a second. And, uh, oh, there you are. Okay. Hey, there he is. All right. He's back. <laughs> he cares. Yes. What the is What the is saying? Oh, come on. All right. So. Uh, He's 15 minute delay and everything. Yeah. So uh, I uh, I mean I had to. I, I, I what? Had to, I had to. What? Just, nothing, man. I just had to you know, BS a little bit. I didn't know what I was doing or saying or talking about, but uh, hey, anyways, we got it up. We're, we're up and running. Um, what what I talked about was uh, a little bit of COVID. I talked about what we're going to go over today. I don't remember what we went over the last show. I'm hoping that you can kind of fill us in a little bit. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, I don't know about this. I don't, 
I don't know if I can do a recap this week. Yeah, I think you can. Um, I'm trying to figure out how to get this this thing away. Um, well, now now I disappeared, my friend. No, no, no. You're you're still there. I just kind of turned you off because I don't know how to get rid of all these borders and everything. It wasn't there before. I th- well, Skype updated, and I don't know. Maybe we're just kind of stuck with it, but whatever. We'll figure out a, a different way to make it work. But there you are. Um, yeah, we're back, uh, everybody. Now you don't have to be bored and listen to me anymore. Uh, we got the uh, charismatic Karelli in there. Um, uh how you doing, Brian? You doing all right? Good to see you. Well, other than Skype pulling a, an ambush out of nowhere and updating right before the show started, uh-huh. other than that, I'm okay. All right. Well, you know, you, you know what, man? I know there's another way to get a video feed, and we'll work on that a little bit later. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll figure it out. I'm a smart guy. I think I can do that. <laughs> right now, Skype is a, is, is a good way of doing it, but uh, I, it's obviously not the best. So now we have these borders. You didn't used to have all of these borders. I don't know how to get rid of them. You think the borders are part of the update? Yeah, probably. It updated right before I turned it on. Here, I'm going to send you a little... I don't know how to do it. Turn off... God, you know what? This is... What am I doing? This is so crappy. Yeah. So... Anyways, it's whatever. Um, but anyways, how you been, man? You doing all right? I'm decent. Good. Are you good. feeling better? I'm feeling much better. Thank you very much. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. How how about you? You feeling okay? Well, you know, other than that there's a zillion and one cases popping up every other day, I'm okay. Yeah, COVID is, um, it's, it's kind of a nasty girl, ain't she? Um... I mean, there's nothing we can do. Right? I mean, I mean, you and I. There's nothing you and I can do, um, other than listen to our medical professionals, wear our mask when we go out. You know, practice good hygiene, uh, social distance from everybody. Well, social, I, I, social distance I would, from existence. I uh, would like to listen to our medical professionals if they would be allowed to be on TV, but that's. <laughs> well, you know, you know he, that that's. They're he, having to resort to podcast. You know. I, being that they're having to resort to podcasts to get information out to the people, I happily invite Dr. Anthony Fauci to all fits or off if he's having oh, difficulty. Oh, absolutely. A- yes. Absolutely. Yes. I, I would- extend the invitation, Dr. Anthony Fauci. We'd love to have you if you're having any difficulty finding a medium is to get your information out there. You don't. You don't need the White House. Just come to all fits or off and we'll take care of you. Yeah, you'll get so, like maybe eight, ten viewers tops. <laughs> you know what but hey but they're a dedicated eight or ten viewers tops that they are um well and imagine if you if he was a star wars fan too oh that'd be pretty good i think you no know, yeah. there is a lot of rumblings in disney and lucasfilm i don't know if you're aware no man you, you really gotta keep me up to date man i haven't been on reddit i haven't but, been on the star wars subreddit or anything we're gonna some of the, some of today's topics are gonna go through that mm-hmm a lot of the rumblings you're going to be in favor of. Just, oh, yeah? I'll, I'll, I'll say that right away. All right, let's talk about this. They, they, they kind of revolve right. around one person, but for for right now. But that's Ka- going to... Kathleen? Yeah. Oh, that, okay. That's going to that's gonna get into some of our topics. What's, but, going, on, what's uh, going on with Homegirl? Well, let's just get let's just jump right into it because there's the whole update debacle delaying us what about twenty minutes. So let's just mm-hmm. let's just get it rolling. What do you say? Yeah, man, let's go ahead. Everybody knows what we're talking about. I already went went through that. Okay, um, good. So, uh, are we going to start with the sequel trilogy to stay in place? Uh, as if you if you want to start to prep, you can start bringing up. Uh, we got this covered. Okay. I want to say that that's where I pulled a lot of the source material. Okay. So. All right. There's been a uh, part of the rumblings that have started is, and you can you can just do a search for Star Wars, and I'm sure all the Star Wars stuff will come will pop up. How many years pass in each Star Wars trilogy? That's not it, right? That's not it. No. Star Wars fans show their love for Harrison Ford on his 78th birthday. 78 oh, wow. years old. O M G. Did okay. you did you do a Star Wars search in the engine in no, the search engine? Or? No, sorry. Yeah, I have ADHD. Wars. I got distracted. I'm trying to tell you. I'll, yeah. do it, I'll do it right now. 
I'm looking so through. okay part part of the part of the scuttlebutt and then one, once those start to load up in the web page you can click in and out to reference if you want uh, but Lucasfilm will ignore the sequel trilogy what's that Lucasfilm will reportedly ignore the Star Wars sequel trilogy uh, that that's that's part of it but uh, it's it's one one the the main ones that you're gonna look for are gonna be that uh, Disney is not necessarily doing what's called getting rid of the sequel trilogy. So let 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 let's just start at the base of stuff right now. Okay. All right. All right. So regardless of what everyone wants to say, the sequel trilogies were a financial success. Yeah, but that doesn't yeah, but that doesn't mean much artistically. For the more man. part. Disney doesn't see it that way because not not the other two did not do what Force Awakens did. So of course to not. Disney it was to Disney it was not a financial success. So then on top of that, you had this huge division amongst the fans, which I mean one's sitting right over here. This guy so, with two thumbs. Yeah. So <clears throat> you had you had this division taking place, splitting the fans down the middle. Mm-hmm. Uh, sequel trilogies are evil. No, sequel trilogies are great. Mm-hmm. So, you had that going on. So all the rumblings started. You know, oh, Kathleen's going to get fired. This and that. So the the first biggie leading into everything right now was that Disney was talking about retooling the sequel trilogy. Now, how do you do that with movies that just came out? How do you retool it? Uh, I agree. I don't. I don't see it feasible. But that, unless you redo that, it, that was actually some of the scuttlebutt that was taking place. Now, what's actually being found out? We'll add some clarity to that. Mm-hmm. So the the retooling is not a thing. Okay. Seven, seven, eight, and nine are to stay in place. Okay. So to speak. <laughs> All right. This is, this is where it gets complicated. Okay. So, word is that the official word is that 7, 8, and 9 are to stay in place, but going forward will be, quote unquote, ignored. So, you're not going to talk about the events that happened during that time? Correct. They will be where, ignored. Where, where have they done this before? Where, where has this been done before? Not that I can, it hasn't uh, been. No, I mean not in, not in the Star Wars universe, but I mean like in what in in what franchise has this been done? No, that's where a good you, question. Where you mm. where you ignore or you ignore? It, well, okay, all right. So let's look at Superman Returns, right? The Brian Singer film. Okay. Uh, they ignored everything after two, so three and four never happened. All right, kind of Superman thing, Superman think? three and Superman four never happened. So Superman it's kind of a good thing, don't you think? Well, Superman four was the quest for peace was actually pretty good, um, but Superman three, me? With, yeah, with Richard Pryor, nah, man, sorry, dude, that just didn't work out. Wait, 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 wait. What? What? Quest, quest, Superman four, quest for peace. Yeah. It was okay. It was. You're okay. saying it was okay. I'm saying it's okay. I didn't say it was great. I didn't say it was the Godfather. All right. So the the evil son guy. Using Gene Hackman's voiceover. Destroy Superman. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> it was okay. That was so bad. I'm sorry. You, you just reminded Superman. me how bad the thing was. It was It was okay. I'm not saying it was, it was horrible. great. It was okay. I'm not, it's not horrible. Superman 3 was horrible. Tuscan, you know the defining moment in Quest for Peace? Uh... No, I mean, okay. What do you was think? the defining moment in Quest for Peace was when Lois did not suffocate inside of an elevator buried in the moon, and Superman went to go get her in the elevator and took her back to Earth. That, sir, was the defining. You know what? Moment of- you know what, Brian? Dude, I remember. I remember early memory. We were watching. I think we were watching that movie at your house when we were younger. Like no kids. way. And he took her into space. Superman took Lois into space. No, not Lois. The other girl. Uh, Lana? Uh, no, Hemingway. What's her name? Margo? Uh, Lana. She played Lana. No, 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 no. Not Lana, not Lana Lang. The other blonde from that, for, that movie. 
the the, the, oh, daughter, the newspaper chick. The, yeah, the daughter of the the owner of the Daily yeah. Planet. Yeah. Superman took her into space, and he'd be like, and then you said you called it out immediately. Oh my God, she went to space. She would die. <laughs> I remember that. Oh my well, God, an I early mean, childhood memory. Yeah. I mean, I mean, think of it. Lois is in an elevator. Yeah. And she gets buried into the moon. So stupid. And then, and then Superman goes and unburies her and takes her back to Earth. Ah, Christ! You know, so, I mean, that's yeah, you that know, sucks. So, you know so, what? So, 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 Superman wait, so, sucks. So, not, right. not, 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 not only does she survive the elevator trip back to Earth, but the elevator doesn't burn up in the atmospheres as Superman goes back to Earth. Maybe they weren't going fast enough to generate the friction, but whatever. It sucked. But that's where they did it. They okay, ignored well, three okay, and four. No, that, that's right. They ignored it. Super, Superman 2, uh, or Superman Returns with Brandon Ralph, pretty it's, much it's, put it's, the story it's out three. there. That, it's number three. In it's that, basically in that, three in, yeah, that, in yeah. that timeline. Yeah, it's in, number in three. That, in that particular timeline, in the, of course they went to Man of Steel after this and just scrapped the whole thing. Yeah, and redid, the, and redid it. Man, Man yeah, of because, Steel... Because as interesting as that is, as interesting as that is, uh-huh. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just throw this out there. Brandon Ralph did a great job being Christopher Reeve. Yeah. But yeah. but you you know what his problem was? What? He did too good a job. What does that mean? He he was so overly faithful to the Christopher Reeve oh, persona and not, make, and not making it that, his own his own interpretation it, of Superman. It, it, it was it was the biggest complaint of that film. Every everyone went in and said I got Christopher Reeve and I didn't get Brandon Ralph. Yeah. So that 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 was like a detractor. But I, 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 I get you. I get you. But yeah, but but that's what that's what they've done. It. They, they've done it in the Superman yeah. movie so that, universe. That, that was a good reference. That was a good reference they to that storyline. That, that that kind of kicked the ball into ignoring stuff. So they're taking this position that seven, eight, and nine are not going to be referenced in all the stuff they're going forward with on Disney Plus or other movies coming up. Okay. The additional scuttlebutt to that that can all be referenced back on we got this covered. Mm-hmm. The additional scuttlebutt to that hmm. is that Kathleen Kennedy's contract, excuse me, her contract will not be renewed. Retire. Her contra- contract's up this January. Time to retire. And they're not going to renew the contract. So that, as they say, is that as far as the Kathleen Kennedy side of it. Maybe they promote but, Filoni. Well, that, that's certainly how it seems. Yeah, you promote Filoni. Yeah. Tony and Foggy will take over. Yeah, but we've got a we've got a topic in here mm-hmm. that when we get to it, mm-hmm. that I don't think it's just going to be Filoni and Foggy, but we'll we'll cover that. Ta- Taika Waititi, my boy, my boy. No, <laughs> no? no, okay, maybe not. But <clears throat> I'm getting I'm going to reiterate what I've said in the past. Please. <laughs> you know You know I am. All right. We're, bets are off if I don't do this. So. All right. We're all bets are late. <laughs> that's what that, that's a, boy, that certainly was the case today. Yeah. <laughs> we're all, we're all, all bets are late to the show. So, I feel that Kathleen Kennedy is just getting way too bad a rap. Okay. Way too bad a rap. Okay. Now, let me ask you before you carry on. Do you think do you think that she's getting this bad rap because she's getting pressure from Iger? I mean, it's, it, it certainly would seem that way if mm-hmm. you want to put it that way because – you know, it, it was a double-edged sword, wasn't it, in 2015 in December? Wasn't it? I mean... Yeah. What happened that year? Well, you had Force Awakens debut Christmas week. Yeah. But it did a kajillion billion dollars, like like what they said in Austin Powers. I mean, it just... It, just, it did way more than what they ever thought or hoped it could do. Well, I mean, episode one did something similar, bro. I mean, it was new. It was like, hey, we thought that it was done. And no, it's not really done. We're going to bring it back. We're making another movie. Cool. It's Star Wars. Everybody wants to go see it. And everybody goes and sees it. And we don't know what to think after that. 
we we just we just don't you know we we just don't know what to think see uh, but un- unlike the phantom menace uh-huh unlike the phantom menace uh-huh the phantom menace didn't clear over two billion just over two billion dollars that was in 1999 man still he the population one the population grew two inflation I mean, right, all that those, takes place, but yeah. even when the Phantom Menace released, I don't, I don't believe it. It was something ridiculous that was going to set up two and three for a lofty expectation. I don't believe that that happened. When this happened with Force Awakens, it immediately set an expectation that automatically doomed the other two to failure. Uh huh. Because there's no way that Last Jedi and The Rise of Skywalker were going to equate what Force Awakens did in 2015. There was, there's no way. It well, was, it was but, too- but hold on. Check this out. The Phantom Menace, right, is the number four movie, right? The highest grossing film, number four, adjusted for inflation. Number four. Titanic, Avatar, Dr. Zhivago, and then The Phantom Menace. Where does the Phantom Menace rank all time without the inflation? Well, that's the thing. You can't do that without inflation because not, it came out in 1999. Because it came out in 1999. Do you remember what was, you were doing in 1999? Yeah. I was outside in the heat waiting for a ticket. <laughs> yeah, I know. I ran into you when I because took my mom Because there was no online sales. There was an online was sales no online at the time. Because there was online ticket sales. Right. So highest grossing oh, uh, franchises. Uh, highest you, know, grossing, I really got on, you know I screwed up getting on the news doing that? How? You went on the news and you couldn't talk or what? So, okay, so the, the, the campsite the, the campsite was at the quarry. I remember. I, I remember me and my mom ran into you. Okay. Yeah, remember that? And you're like, this is my third time or second time that day. I'm like, damn, dude. All right. <laughs> and you know, my mom fell asleep in the middle of the movie. <laughs> Oh, she fell asleep. She fell asleep at the pod race. <laughs> you don't see it. She, she fell, fell asleep. asleep at the pod race. She you're fell asleep. Me. Mom, you fell asleep. I know you watch these every time we throw them on YouTube. You fell asleep. I, can gonna, you blame her? Yeah, I know you're going to text me in can the morning. You blame, can you blame her for falling asleep at the Phantom Menace pod racing scene? I don't think I can blame her. It wasn't super exciting. And I just know Lucas threw it in there because he's a huge racing fan, but... Um, yeah, she, she passed out and I just looked at her like, I had already seen it though, but I took her, I don't know, because, you know, I wanted to hang out with my mom, you know, but yeah, she, she oh. fell asleep I, <laughs> and you know what? The yeah. whole world is going to know this now because, you know, we throw this on YouTube. Everybody's going to know. I, I, I camped out there. I and camped out over there okay. for Phantom Menace okay. tickets. From now and on, I, you do as I tell you. Okay. Welcome. Uh, mm-hmm. Just in time for my embarrassing story. So, mm-hmm. I camped out there at the quarry for those tickets the night before. Mm-hmm. The night before they went on sale that that following day, mm-hmm. and it was abysmal conditions. I'm telling you, just it sucked. Really? It absolutely sucked. It was hot. Well, it is plus Texas. it was ra- plus it was raining. It was raining so, that night. Right. Really? It was it was raining the night before, so and it wasn't cool, refreshing rain. It was hot, ugly, muggy, yucky rain. Okay. Ooh, okay. So I was I really I started to get into a bad mood real fast. Then there was long story short, there was a Monopoly game that went to crap. So there there was that, throw that in there. A Star Wars Monopoly game. Mm. That didn't go my way, but whatever. Nobody wins at Monopoly, you know that, right? Uh, correct. Okay. So, but this was a real, just frustrating experience overall. So, uh-huh. uh huh. Then the morning came, mm-hmm. and as morning shifted to early afternoon, the heat was just even more intense. Really? I didn't have, you know. But what time did they open? We, not till they didn't start selling tickets till eleven. Oh, really? 
Well, you know, I mean, now they do midnight showings, you know, the night before, like that Wednesday or Thursday. Or is it Thursday right. or the Wednesday usually? Right. This is a whole different era of movie, man. This is yeah. no... I did that for The Dark Knight. That was the last... No, I did that for... Yeah, that was the last time I did it. No, I take that back. I did that for The Dark Knight. I did a midnight showing for The Dark Knight. For Infinity War, they had a show, not at midnight, but they had like an afternoon show on Thursday that I got off early of work for and then I went to go see here in here in Miami, um, which was great. Um, but yeah, it was way different back then. But I had purchased my tickets online like weeks prior. You can't do that. I mean, you couldn't do that back then. Everything was different. You know, it was it was all analog and manual and you had to you know, really rough it and stand out there and, and do that. Yep. And, and, and I, and I did that actually, I did that for my Nintendo switch too. It's fun. There's something, there's something fun about that. I, I, I went to the, the best buy here in, in, in Doral and I waited in line to get my switch and they didn't do anything online. They just gave you a little piece of paper and they gave you a barcode on there. Like you're going to present this when you get in there and you're going to be able to buy your switch and games or whatever. I was like, I'm not going to buy any games. Let's do it all online. So I bought the Switch, and here it is. I got it right here, my little Switch. So that was fun. That's, there's something fun about it because you're hanging out with people that are doing the same thing, you can chat and talk. I mean, you're really amongst your peers at that point. And, you know, even though you kind of endured those, those crappy conditions, it's an experience. And look, we can talk about it now. It's cool. It's super cool. Well, so as, as the heat got worse, I didn't have anything to drink. Oh, Brian. I, so... <clears throat> Literally, a lot of us were literally up against the quarry's doors trying to get whatever air conditioning we could mm. to the little crack of the door. It got that bad. You then, were, tw- were you 21 at the time? Uh, I was 18. How old are you? How old are well, you now? I'm 45 now. I mean, if we're yeah, you were. Ages now, you were 21. Yeah, you were 21. So... Yeah, you should have just as, taken a cooler as, beer, man. As we're as we're up against the door, just trying to get whatever ventilation we can. Mm-hmm. At that point, that's when KSAT showed up. Oh, really? And she was going down the line, asking everybody how they how they how they were feeling at that curt. You know, were were they excited about the doors opening and all this stuff? And we're hot. It's summer in South Texas. <laughs> I'm about third or fourth down the line, uh-huh. and she gets to me, mm-hmm. and she's like, "What about you, sir? What 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 are you feeling right now as the tickets are about to go on sale?" And I, I'm there, mm-hmm. in my stupid blue Cubs hat and a Yo Quiero Taco Bell T-shirt, <laughs> and Yo Quiero Taco Chihuahua, Bell ahorita, Chihuahua and everything. Yeah, I want that now. And I looked at her. Mm-hmm. With almost a look of utter disgust, I just I just looked at her and I just said, "Lady, all I want is my expletive tickets." You said and then that, she. You said that on the news. And, you said that on KSAT twelve. And then she turned around and looked at her camera guy and did the, the, the <laughs> mark the thing mark with her mic and then went to another person. Oh. And God, my my but my, my my buddy next to me, looked at me and said, "Dude." You just wrecked your chance to get on KSAT. And I was like, I don't care. Oh, man. And that was like, that's when KSAT was big. That was before uh, News 4 San Antonio, I think, took them over. You right. You know, as far as whatever their viewership or whatever it is. Or what was it back then? W, oh, no. It's WAI. I don't know what, whatever the NBC station is over there in, in San Antonio. KMOL. KMOL. There you go, KMOL. Yeah, that, whatever that is. I think they took them over as far as viewership goes, but. Now it's WAI. Now it's WAI TV? Yeah. Nah, I don't know. They keep changing crap. Or whatever. Um, yeah, yeah, I can't believe it. You screwed, your, you, you screwed it up. Oh, I totally I totally jacked that up, man. Oh, man. Totally yeah, jacked that up. That was, that was some good times, man. That was, my, that was my senior year in high school. And there was so much speculation. And, and everything, all the news that we were getting were like from magazines, you know, monthly magazines and things like that. We had no news uh, online. I mean, kind of did, but it wasn't like it is now. So that was fun yeah, stuff, it, man. And then what did we get in the end? What did we get in the end? We got Darth Maul only getting about eight minutes of screen time in the whole movie. And it wasn't so, even Ray Park's voice. It would have been better if it was Ray Park's voice, I think. 
No, it was not Mark's voice. No, no it, it was, was somebody else's. But I mean, I think it would be better. Not everybody has to have an English accent in Star Wars. You know, they don't. Why? Just because Peter Cushing had it? I mean, <laughs> why? <laughs> That's where it started, man. You know. It started with, with, with Peter Cushing and then everybody else, oh, okay, well, I guess we're all British in space, you know? <laughs> Am, Admiral, Admiral Piet and Admiral Ozzel and... Yeah. Yeah, and then they all, yeah, they all became British. I mean, and, and they looked, they looked unapologi- unapologetically British, too, so... Now, hang on a minute. Now, hang on a minute. What? Krennic didn't have an accent. But... Is he the, the actor? Isn't he British? I don't know, but Krennic did not have an accent. No, he didn't have an accent. Now that guy in Episode Four mm-hmm. that got all haughty with Vader. Who? The 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 one Imperial officer that threw an attitude at Vader in Episode Four. But where? Where, where did he do it? You have to remind me. Which it was scene? at the it was at the meeting at their. At their conference table. Oh, he was throwing shade at him about being a Jedi and that archaic religion, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yeah. And he starts choking him. Don't try to frighten us with your sorcerer's ways, Lord Vader. That's right. He didn't have an accent. Well, let's see how good your accent is when you're getting choked. He wasn't getting choked yet. He didn't have an accent during that whole conversation. Sorry, I'm into that. Um, but so that's, anyways. That's, that's two of them without an accent. That's two of them. <laughs> yeah, Krennic and that guy. That's 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 two of them. But um, yeah, after that, all of them had an accent, though, I think. I, I, uh, I slipped in an adult joke there. If you miss it, I'm I'm glad. Okay, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. And my, mom, oh, my mom watches this stuff, man. Look, <laughs> at what you, look at what you raised, Mom. <laughs> Well, um, so, okay, so, um, we, uh, why don't we talk a little bit about, about Rian Johnson's trilogy? Oh, man. Okay, well, I, I don't know if you're gonna, okay. Are you sure? You ready for this? No, we, I'm we, never we, ready we, for anything. We, 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 we had brought this up in a show prior, and you, it nearly threw you for a, for a, for a good little tumble, did, but. Did it upset me? Did it, did it get me emotional? It got. It didn't get you the clamp, but you weren't happy with it. Oh, okay, okay. So let's let's get unhappy again because I mean happiness is fleeting. So let's <laughs> let's let's get mad. Let's get angry. Well, <laughs> it turns out that in there's there's some plot details that are beginning to emerge. Yeah. Uh. I'm trying something real quick. Did that get rid of the borders by chance? No, it no. didn't. Did it? I, it has to be on my end. I'll, I'll figure it out. Who cares? <laughs> Whatever. Skype. Microsoft. Crap. Anyway. <laughs> well, mm. it turns out that the plot, the plot detail that is emerging for his trilogy yeah. is going to involve what's quickly be, becoming affectionately known as Broom Boy. What? What the hell is that mean? Broom boy. Broom boy. Broom? Like a broom? Like you sweep? Yeah. You remember Broom Boy from Last Jedi? At the very end? That the completely pointless ending? Mm-hmm. What about him? Apparently he's going to be possibly the central figure in his trilogy. Oh, my God. Oh. Now, this somewhat conflicts with the whole seven, eight, and nine are going to be ignored going forward. What is this guy doing? What is seriously? Why What's couldn't wrong? Why couldn't Colin Trevorrow take care of this? What's why? wrong with Broom Boy? What's wrong with Broom Boy? What What point does he have? What was that? It made no sense. It he did it nothing. shows you. It shows you that. Jedi can be found just about anywhere, even in I, the unexpected. I don't want that to happen. Why? Because. I mean, Why? Be, be, well, I mean, okay. I take that back. Yes, but I want it to be of significance, you know? I mean, 
I, 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 okay, that ending didn't tell me anything, right? That ending with Broom Boy standing there, looking at the stars, it, it told me nothing because he wasn't anything in the movie, you know? He didn't really but do he, it. But it's showing you his potential for a potential destiny. At the end? His own destiny. Yeah, I mean... Uh, uh, I don't know, man. It just, it just it didn't fit. It just didn't fit with the narrative that they were that they were talking about. You know, I want to see John Boyega, right, explore more of his potential because he was in the whole trilogy. He wielded a lightsaber, right? It's interesting you say that cuz that's going to lead in, but that that's interesting you say that. But I don't continue. I don't care about Broom Boy. I really don't care about Rian Johnson. If they could kick him out of the whole Star Wars universe, I'd be the happiest Tuscan toast there is. He has no place in this whatsoever. He doesn't. He screwed. He screwed the pooch, and he screwed it bad. Bye. Bye. Colin Trevorrow, I want you. Taika Waititi, I want you. Sorry, man. That's it. That's what it is. And if I get heated and emotional and all about it, I'm sorry, man. I just don't like what he did. Actually, I hate what he did. I'm ang- <laughs> I'm angry at what he did. Because he had the potential to make this great, and what did he do? He made it suck. You know, it it didn't even make it, he didn't even make it mediocre, right? Mediocrity I can deal with. All right, cool. You're just kind of there. You're just existing. I get it. No, but you have to really try to make something suck, and he did. So, can you pinpoint exact specifications as to what sucked? Absolutely. So we start talking about the Last Jedi, right? And uh, Ray goes onto that little island planet, whatever, and uh, Luke Skywalker is there hanging out. And Luke, you don't is, know the name of the planet? Sure, it's uh, Watertopia. Okay, cool. Well, well, what is it? I'll write it down so I don't. No, nah, let's, let's just do Watertopia. No, 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 no
Go save your friends. Uh, I, 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 that's, that was, I think that part, that whole part of, of the, of the last Jedi is what got me so upset because at the end of the force of awakens, we see Luke Skywalker at the end, right? And he looked epic, bro. I mean, he takes off his, his hood and he has the, the robotic arm and you're like, oh my God, this is going to be awesome. He's going to come back. He's going to kick some major ass and he's going to look awesome in this next movie, right? As an old man, right? Like Obi-Wan. Cool. It's going to be great. No. He's just whining, whining on this little island, right? Saying how he failed. And Ben Swolo, right, is now uh, Kylo Ren and blah, 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 right? Just feeling sorry for himself. Dude, go do something, man. Go out there. You're a Jedi, right? You're the son of Darth freaking Vader. Go do something. No, it just sits there, man. It just sits there and whines and, you know, tries to kick Ray out and everything. And then complains about sacred texts. I'm telling is, you, man. Is it out of your system now? How long have I been going at this? Too long because I'm about to tear it all down. Let's do it. Like I usually do. Let's go. Like I usually do. Let's go. So your biggest complaints are... That Luke was whiny. Yes. That he was... His so-called legend status was undermined. Yes. That he didn't kick any ass, I guess. Well, he did in the end. Mm, sort of. Yes or no? Uh, no, he didn't. Yeah. No, he didn't. Mm -mm. Okay, so... And that pretty much sums up your main complaints. Well, I have others. Did but I, miss that's, anything? That's the, I have others, but that's the biggest one, yes. All right. So let's talk about the legendary status first a little bit. Let's do it. What makes him a legend? Luke Skywalker? Mm -hmm. He's the son of Darth Vader. Is that it? And he destroyed Darth Vader. And he saved, he, saved, he saved Darth Vader, and then... Whoa, 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 He saved wait, Darth Vader. Wait, wait, He yeah. destroyed Darth Vader? No, How did he, he do saved. that? He's, I'm sorry, he saved Darth Vader. He saved, he saved him? How did he, he save saved, him? He saved him. He brought him How? back. He brought him back. He brought him back? He brought him back. He brought Darth Vader back. He brought Darth Vader back. Darth Vader didn't do that on his own? No. No? No. No, no. he did it. He did it. How you figure? Well, because he was the one that, Father, please, no! And then, you know, Palpatine is, Good, good, you're a Jedi. And he's like, you know, electrifying him and everything like that. And then Luke goes, Father, please, no! And then, so anyways, and so Skywalker... That without that happening, there was no way that he was going to come back? I Well, no, I don't think so. I don't think that there was anything to bring him back. You're you know? assuming. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, it's it's a movie. And so, I mean, I have to assume. What if I told you, what if I told you because of a single act that Luke is nothing sh close to a legend? Okay, tell me. What if I told you that he murdered his best friend? He had a friend? A best friend. Han Solo? No. Who? You don't really pay attention to these things when you watch them, do you? I get distracted sometimes. Uh-huh, it would appear so. Yeah? Big, Big's Dark Lighter. Big... Uh, the, the pilot? Mm hmm How? 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 Yeah, how do you murder him? Okay, so Biggs Darklighter is his best friend, his closest friend. They mm -hmm. grew up together, hung out together. Oh, wait until... a minute, was, was Biggs, the, okay, from the deleted scene in episode four, was Biggs, like, telling him about, oh, yeah, the, being in the Imperial... Army is awesome and blah blah blah. They they added that by the way into Disney Plus. I've heard. Oh, nice. I need to go back and watch and see that's where that's a good scene. I've seen, I, I've seen it. It's 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 a cool scene. Which is, they 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 decided to do it ever since George Lucas put him back in the special edition. Mm -hmm. When him and when him and Luke are walking to their fighters. Yeah. And they had that little moment of catching up that got yeah. added back in. Okay. Okay, but how did he so, murder him? Oh, well, I'm getting to that. Okay. 
So the assault on the Death Star on Yavin, mm -hmm. the assaults took place in threes, right? Every time they did a run on the trench, they took place in threes. Oh, okay. I, you I had didn't... the you had the lead fighter. All right. Which that was going to be the fighter that was going to take the shot at the the uh, tunnel shaft. I'm sorry, I didn't follow. Right. The, I didn't follow the tactics, but uh, okay. Well, yeah, yeah. You, they they went in threes. You had you had the lead. You had the lead fighter, which that was going to be the one to fire the proton torpedoes at the targeting shaft. Mm -hmm. Then you had the two wingmen whose job was to, well, pretty much die to see to it that the lead plane made it. Mm -hmm. they, they they provided cover as long as they could before they were waxed, mm -hmm. so that lead fighter would have time to get the shot off. Uh huh. Every wave. That went in there. The two wingmen bought it. Okay. Correct. Oh yeah. Gold, Gold Squadron. Gold Squadron went first. Mm -hmm. Those were the Y wings. All right. 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 So, Hutch, Tyree, mm -hmm. and the other guy. They they all got waxed. Okay. They were the first group in. Right. Then, Red Squadron with Gold Leader went in next. Okay. Right. Right. So, Red Leader and his two wingmen, gone. Okay. Luke, Luke's group is up. Okay. Who, who were Luke's wingmen? Who'd he take with him? Biggs, Dark Fighter. Uh-huh. And uh, Porkins. No, Porkins died way early on. <laughs> oh, Porkins. Okay, who? So, if you, remember, if you remember the briefing of that battle, Luke met an outstanding... New newcomer and a pilot with a green helmet that everyone now knows as Wedge Antilles. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And Wedge looked at him and said, "Oh, you know, you can't bullseye that. It's impossible for a computer and all that stuff." Mm -hmm. Oh, it's, Luke it's like just, it's like hitting what are they called? Womp rats in a yeah, yeah. Uh, that Luke, Luke like said, that. "Ah, you know, it's no, it's no different than bullseye bull, bullseyeing rock womp rats and stuff." But okay. point being, that's the first time he met the guy. Okay. First time he's meeting Wedge, ever. Right. But he's grown up his whole life, and his best friend is Biggs. Cool. All right. So when they're in the trench, who gets hit first? Wedge? No. Uh -huh. Okay. Yes. And okay. what happens? And what happens? This is key. What happens after Wedge gets hit? I don't know, man, but you had a lot of buildup coming to this, so you might as well drop the hammer now. So Wedge gets hit, and then he tells Luke, I'm hit. I can't stay with you. Okay. And Luke's reply is, get clear, Wedge. You can't do any more good back there. And he lets Wedge go. Okay. And he leaves Biggs back there to deal with Vader and the other two ties. Right. And Biggs is back there pleading for his life. Right. Right. To Luke, to hurry up. Uh -huh. Because there's, he's just, and he's begging for help. Okay. So Luke allows Wedge to leave. When all the other ones gave themselves up. But he lets Wedge go. And leaves Biggs in the back. His best friend. His lifelong friend. And leaves him there to perish. After letting a guy that he just met in a briefing escape. Uh, uh, okay. Legend? Legend? Please, uh, he's a backstabber. Inexperienced. He was super young. Oh, please. He betrayed him. That was, I mean, <laughs> totally slammed the door on him. Just like, ah, okay, I'm gonna let Wedge go, but sorry, you got to stick it out. Okay, so Luke. Okay, so Luke Skywalker is a scumbag and a murderer. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna. That's what we're gonna consider him. Luke Skywalker. I'm writing it down because I'm gonna keep this. Write it down. Yeah, Write it Luke down. Skywalker is a scumbag. And I'm not going to give him legendary status. Let's murder put that. and murderer. Obi Wan Kenobi. That's a legend. On par. Quite that's a legend. 
Oh, Qui Gon, Qui Gon, Qui Gon Jim, Qui Gon Jim, yeah. <laughs> and Obi Wan Ginobili. <laughs> Mace Windu, that's a legend. Is he? This this guy, I don't know. I really wanted him to say one line throughout the whole Star Wars, the whole his whole like. But who? Story. I wanted who's to, to say, one say line. Who's to say this broom boy from Rian Johnson couldn't grow to be a legend? Because I don't like Rian Johnson, and I hope he stays the hell away from Star Wars. Oh, man. I'm so angry at this guy right now. I hope we can bring him on the show whenever we're big and we make it. I'm going to be like, dude, why'd you do this? Why didn't you let Colin Trevorrow just take it? I'm sorry. Why did you suck? Why did you make this garbage? Who cares about Broom Boy? I want John Boyega. <laughs> well, speaking of John Boyega, let's just go ahead and get into the next Yeah, let's, let's talk about him, man. Let's, let's talk speaking about it. I'm, you know, I'm, I mean, you already, I, already, I, brought, already brought him up twice that you I, want more John Boyega. Because I'm super proud of him. I'm super proud of him as an actor and as a figure in the community. I'm super proud of him. It's, it's hard to not be a John Boyega fan. Well, it just so happens that John Boyega wants Finn to get a larger focus in Star Wars going forward. So, Well, he should. He really should. He showed some great potential as a character in the movie. That, 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 that's just what I was going to bring up is the mm -hmm. fact that it was pretty clear that Finn had Force sensitivity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They, they made it clear in The Force Awakens, because I'm sorry, but he can clearly hear the cries of the New Republic that got blown away by the Starkiller base. Yeah, and I'm just, I'm hoping that whatever, in whatever medium they, they put him in, that he doesn't scream, Ray! Like 20 times. <laughs> I think there's like a super cut on YouTube on like how many times he screamed Ray's name every time he was in trouble. Yeah, I think there's a super cut on there. But yeah, but yeah, I'm 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 a, I'm a fan of the I'm a fan of the character and his potential. Um, I like to see what I really liked in in Force Awakens was you know the conflict between his duty as a as a stormtrooper and the morality of what he was actually doing. I like that that conflict and the fact that he was really one of the only, you know, stormtroopers that took that takes off his helmet. So, Good point. Uh, and he finally he finally gets it with with Captain Phasma and he's able to you know battle it out with her. I think that's the one thing I did enjoy from from Last Jedi was the battle between Finn and and Captain Phasma. I that was pretty I, sweet. Yeah, I think that was I think that was pretty good. Um, you know, because they had that tension. Ever since, you know, Force Awakens. So that's one of the, you know, kind of the... Eh, I won't say it's a saving grace of that movie, but it's it's one of the, the high points. I think the saving grace of Last Jedi was where Rey and um, Kylo Ren are fighting together against... What, what, what are they? The, the security guard? The PSD? Personal security? They're known as the Praetorian Guards. Yeah, the Praetorian... Yeah, the, 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 the Vatican Knights, whatever you call them. Uh, yeah, Vatican Knights. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the Swiss Guard, whatever they are. Um, yeah, I, think that, I thought that was actually pretty sweet. But I wanted so badly for Rey to go to the dark side and just join... Uh, Kylo Ren at the end of that film and then like the rise of Skywalker would have just been all about trying to bring her back that would have been so cool oh my god that would have really thrown everybody for a loop and just not follow the same MO of you know good versus evil and then it's going to be it would be kind of good versus kind of evil I think that would be that would have been sweet well you know they, they talk about the original cut of the rise of Skywalker and it was a much darker version yeah that was Colin Trevorrow's that was his so, treatment. That was his treatment. I've seen it, and I wanted it to be darker. Re Revenge of the Sith was was a darker movie. It was rated PG thirteen. You know, it was it was very dark. And in 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 retrospect, I was actually thinking about this the other day because I guess that's what I do when I'm bored. I think about how to make a Star Wars movie better. Is the entire like the battle between Sidious and well, uh, you know, Chancellor Palpatine at the time. And uh, Mace Windu, and the, who were the other two Jedi that he killed pretty easily when they confronted him? They were going to arrest him. Uh, Kit Fisto was in there, and I forget the other guy. Yeah, so I mean, I think that was that would have been a pretty epic battle had they made it just look a little darker, you know, a little, you know, maybe. I mean, it was it was epic, but well, I, my biggest complaint is that up, up until Mace Windu, it was way too easy because mm -hmm. Kit Fisto and the others were supposed to be the top sword, the top swordsman 
from the council with Windu. He yeah. took the top guys. Yeah, he took so them out super fast. For them to get cut down in less than ten seconds was very disappointing. Yeah, he took them out pretty easy. Because um, they, they were supposed to have some of the best uh, skillful dexterity and lightsaber dueling amongst the whole council. Yeah, and, and, but you know, I think the the, the tone, uh, the cinematic tone of that scene, I, I would have liked to have seen what uh, what um, what they did with the rise of Skywalker when you know Palpatine was there as as the clone. And he was talking to Kylo Ren and that really in, on Exegol and it was really dark and lightning and it was um, it was very cryptic and, and odd and, and it was uneasy to watch. I would have loved to that scene been very uneasy because it kind of would have built up to Anakin Skywalker, you know, turning into Darth Vader because that's the moment. That's the moment it happened. It happened there when he killed Mace Windu. Well, he didn't really even kill Mace Windu. He just cut off his arm and then Palpatine shot him out the window, you know, but that was the defining moment and he did it for love. He did it for, for an emotion, you know, Anakin did it for an emotion. So if you were to make it dark and cryptic and, and kind of, I I think, you you know, it's, it's weird. It's, it's, it's getting into this, this emotional state that sometimes I feel that I get in from time to time is like you, you are taking this 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 feeling, right? This very strong and passionate feeling of love, and it's a it's a very dark turn, right? Because he's doing it just for that, and how far people will go because they love someone. It's it, it's it's crazy. It's kind of weird, and it's a little more, I guess, artistic to think about and for me to say than 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 Star Wars actually shows. But had you made it that way, it would have. I think it would have really solidified the idea of what Darth Vader is and why he is the way he is now, right? Mm. He's he is that way because he loved a woman, you know, and how sure. and how often can a lot of people say that honestly? Like the people the the people that we have become, you know, in life or later on is because we love somebody. <laughs> you know, uh, I mean, a lot of people can say that. You know, they can say I'm this way because either I got burned or, you know, I love somebody and it didn't work out or, you know, it's, it's, it's a real play on the human emotion and, and it humanizes Darth Vader. It's like, yeah, he's half robot, half human, but why is he so mad? Why is he so angry? Why is he willing to kill everybody? Because he loved a woman and she died because he believed he killed her, you know? Well, I'm going back. We we strayed a bit, but going back to John Boyega's force sensitivity, yeah, yeah. Um, they confirmed in the Rise of Skywalker that what he wanted to tell Rey mm-hmm. when they were sinking in the sand mm-hmm. was that he could feel the force. That's what he was trying to tell her. Oh, he wasn't trying to say that I, I love you or you're hot no, or something no, like they, that. No, they dispelled that. What he was in fact trying to tell her was that he could feel the force. Oh. Okay. So cool. he's a force sensitive character, and I feel that that didn't get. It didn't get enough attention. Enough, it didn't get enough attention at it, all. It definitely so, didn't get get enough attention. But that's okay, and that's and that's okay. I'm cool with that because now you have Disney Plus, right? As this as this as this vehicle of exploring these these new storylines. And well, and and, and, I'm, <laughs> and getting and getting into that, right? We need to talk about this because we got about twenty minutes left. Is what Filoni is doing with Clone Wars. So the big thing there, it's and I credit you for this. Yes, because I called it. I you called ab- it. You you absolutely called this. I called I, it. I, Woo! I can't remember what show it was. Yeah, uh, it, like, it, it? it was it was like three or four weeks ago. It was a, it was a while back. It was a while back. But you 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 said that they were gonna do. Clone Wars spinoffs mm-hmm. into, you know, so sure enough, Star Wars.com announced today, starting 2021, that they're going to get the Bad Batch, its own series. Exactly. And so, why, I mean, and why hats, not? Off, hats, hats off, man. You absolutely nailed it. Exactly. But, but why not? Why introduce, right? These awesome characters, right? Why, why introduce them if you really had no intention of reutilizing them? 
this is this is great, and this is big news. And hats off to Filoni and Lucasfilm because they pretty much made an A team, right, out of Star Wars. Right, you have a crack team of subject matter experts coming together, right, and they are just pretty much guns for hire when it you know when it comes to the to, to the Clone Wars, and they're gonna have their own adventures. And it's great for storytelling, Brian. I'm telling you, because each one has their own personality. And it's awesome. You can expect one thing from each person every episode. It's going to be great, man. This is, this is, this is going to be so fun to watch. I'm telling you. It, it really I'm just is. Really, I'm really interested as to what plot lines they're going to come up with. Hey, well, here's the thing. It doesn't have to be very deep plot lines. It just has to be fun plot lines. Because this is, this is the A-team, right? This is the A team for I, Star Wars. I will say I will say this. I will mm. say this. I don't foresee a survivable outcome for the whole group at the end of the at the end of the series. No, they die. They absolutely die. I'm thinking that um, I'm thinking that they're all going to go out just because they're never mentioned in anything else. Yeah, they so they they die. They I mean they, they they're, they, they're going to have to figure out a way to give it closure. Yeah. They they, they die. And that's okay. Uh, I mean, okay. But I mean, it's it's just going to be one of these fun things because it's just going to be like, man, what are they getting into next? It's going to be that instead of having Clone Wars, it it, it follows the the backstory of Obi Wan, Anakin, Anakin, and Ahsoka. All these things. I mean, it, it's one of those things we don't have to worry about. It's just going to be, hey, every every episode is going to be fun, and that's it. It's going to be fun. It's going to be entertaining. It, it's going to be like Community, you know, or the A Team. There's no real continuity. It's just let's just see what these guys do, and that's going to be great. And that's that's what they need right now. You, you can you can definitely. definitely you can definitely segue from the Clone Wars being part of the of the epic saga, and then just go into the straight bad batch. And you're talking about these cool guys, right? It's like Ninja Turtles, but for Star Wars, but not quite Ninja Turtles. So, <laughs> you know. And I'm gonna I'm gonna go off the rails, but going into your point that. Disney Plus is going to be serving as the medium. Mm-hmm. So, with the with all the COVIDity going on, Disney has announced that all Marvel Phase Four is just pushed. It has to be the whole the whole the whole phase. Not Phase Five right now is fine, mm-hmm. but Phase Four has been completely pushed, and they're even talking about putting Black Widow directly to Disney Plus. Which, yeah. I'm kind of, which I'm kind of excited about because the fact that I don't have to pay a movie ticket to go see that, hey, you know. I, I yeah, and, and I'd be and I'd be fine with that. Um, oh, I'm fine with it. Uh, I mean, they're they're having a lot of shows, you know, go on to Disney Plus. They're going to do you know Falcon and Winter Soldier, WandaVision, um, right? And, Loki. Yeah, and and the Loki show. They're they're all going to be on Disney Plus. You know, it's just, you know, it's it, it's really. I mean, it's going to be a little, little bit of a mess, I think, as to where the Marvel Cinematic Universe goes after um, Endgame, uh, because I mean, it's Endgame was Endgame, and we saw the first taste of what a Marvel Universe after Endgame was with uh, Spider-Man: Far From Home, mm-hmm. uh, and it was just kind of weird because now they call it the, they give it some weird name, and it's getting a, a little campy, and they called it the Blip. You know, when everyone was gone for three years. Oh, and, right. Yeah, yeah, they called it the blip. Yeah, the snap and you had the, the blip. Yeah, the snap and you had the blip. Um, so, you know, where this all really goes is just going to be a little... This is, It's going to be a little bit weird to see. Um, but, I, I, I mean, I, I mean, who knows? I mean, it's it, it could be where you have, like, you know, the original Avengers and then you're kind of spinning off after phase four and phase five and you have another set of avengers and and whatever i mean it's it's going to be interesting but you know these actors can't be doing it forever you know no. anthony mackie isn't always going to be able to be you know falcon um so it's it's and and the wandavision i don't know if you've ever kind of seen what they're going to do with wandavision but no i'm i'm looking forward to that yeah it's it's I'm really look- it's really going off of the rails man i mean it's like, it's it's <laughs> the, the way- whole the whole thing where the whole thing where it looked like a dick van dyke episode i'm, I'm for yeah, this it's, it's i'm like, for it's, this i want to see this it's way in the left field and this is my theory this is my fan theory my fan theory is that this whole wandavision series is going to be 
Wanda's mind imagining how their life would be if Vision was as still a couple. Alive. Yeah, that's, that'd couple, be pretty cool. If Vision yeah. was still alive, um, you know, and that's kind of the thing about Disney Plus is that you have is that you have the ability to do these kind of things because now you have the medium for it, and you can throw it on there just you know like Netflix and everything. But of course, it's Disney, so they had to do their own thing. They had to. They're they're so large as a media conglomerate. You have to have your own streaming service. It doesn't mm-hmm. make sense to use anything that's established right now. Disney, the Disney name is solidified with entertainment. Disney Plus. How excited were you and I when it came out originally? Oh super, man, super excited. So yeah, of, of course it was a given. And then Bob Iger was doing a great job as CEO of of pushing this. He was going on CNBC because I watch CNBC all the time. And he was going on there and he was, you know, pushing the service. And he was actually, I mean, I, I got to hand it to Iger. I mean, I know he's leaving soon, but I got to hand it to this guy. He was absolutely realistic with how the service is going to be. He said, we are ready. We have tested. We do anticipate that we have underestimated the demand. There may be server problems, but we have the team in place ready to rectify it quick and then sure enough what happened that first day everybody was having some issue signing oh in. man that first day was a night <laughs> that first day was... everybody was having a real problem signing in but they fixed it within about 24 48 hours so he was super realistic and i can appreciate that i mean it's not it's not something that i mean it's it was, it was a surprise to me it's a brand new medium it's a brand new thing that you're pushing out you knew there was going to be a glitch or you're two. You're going to have yeah. a glitch or two. And I'm okay with it, you know? So, super realistic. And they did it. And they did it very well. But now, look. You can have all the Star Wars shows that you want. All of the Marvel shows that you want. Every single movie that you've ever put out in one solid package. And not only that, but you pay a little bit more. What do you get? ESPN and Hulu and what's the other thing? National Geographic? Mm-hmm. Cool. All right. I'm... I'm all for it, except for ESPN, because I don't care what's going on. There's nothing going on right now. I don't care. <laughs> hey, July 31st, apparently the NBA is going to be in a bubble. So We'll see. With, without without Russell Westbrook. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know how, I'm excited, how excited I am to see it. I really don't. It's just weird. It's I weird. I don't believe I'll be watching, to be honest. I don't, I don't think so either. Yes. You know what? No, I take that back. That's a stupid statement to make. I'm absolutely going to watch it, because... I'm curious as to how this is going to look and get pulled off. Yeah, so am I. I, I, I don't know how well it's going to look. Curiosity I, is too much to ignore. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Maybe I get bored of it. I, I, I don't know. I mean, we'll see. As far as I'm concerned, it's, this, this I'm, season I'm, of the I'm watch. I'm curious of the digitized fans. I want to see this. I want to see the digitized 2K fans that they're going to use. Yeah, I'm. I'm <laughs> Jesus. I'm, I'm on pins. I'm on pins and needles for this. I, I, I have to see this. Uh, yeah, I guess. I, I'm just so used to no sports right now. I really am. Um, you know, do I, do I miss it? And, and speaking of sports, other big news today. The Washington Redskins name is no more. Right. There, are, no more. there is no such thing as the Washington Redskins anymore. There, there will no longer be the Thanksgiving Cowboys versus Redskins tradition. That is now gone. That is Over. done. That is done. It is a that is it. So well, we've only we've only got about ten minutes left coming up. So what I mm-hmm. what I'd like you to do is get to the we got this covered page. Uh, oh, all right. I'll fine, yeah. fine. I'll do it, but not because you told me to. No, uh, it's because I told you. It's absolutely, because I told you. And I want you to, I want you to search George Lucas seven eight and nine when you get to we got this covered. Oh, uh, how do you spell George? Really. <laughs> What's my grandfather's name? How can I'll I get I'll get King George from Hamilton to tell you how. Oh, okay. Uh, Super Tan. Uh, don't, forget to, uh, Lucas. don't forget to tack on seven, eight, and nine to it. Uh, how he'll make his original original sequel trilogy. Yep, I got it. Uh, so I felt this is the biggest news of the day. Oh, is that what you felt? Okay. Because are you kidding me? How is it not that? Bad Batch absolutely takes a backseat to this. But. Okay. So it appears that Mr. Lucas is getting bored. Well, he's, he's retired, effectively, you know? Wouldn't you well, be? I mean, 
it's not like he has to be bored. I mean, he's got an entire money film studio and on, on Skywalker Ranch to mess with just to do stuff yeah. if he's bored. Mm. But it appears that perhaps a mixture of boredom and dissatisfaction, probably, yeah, with seven eight and nine are leading him that he wants to do his seven eight and nine. Okay. I find this fascinating because, unless I'm mistaken, <laughs> Star Wars is presently owned by another company. Right. So I would love to know how he intends to pull this off because I don't would know. Def- we we don't have- we don't know we don't know the full details of the deal. You, you would have to think. You would have to think that it's going to involve some kind of a buyback. Maybe. How else I, can he do it? I, I, if I he mean, doesn't buy part of it back, he he'd have to at least buy a percentage back, or he would have to he would have to get in there and get in some shares or something. He cannot just be divorced from it like he currently is. He would have to have some kind of ownership maybe. in order to get this done. And we all know that he's not just going to want some kind of ownership. That's not George Lucas. Yeah. He's gonna want to do this his way, his his timetable, mm-hmm. his his creative control. He's not gonna want anyone from Disney telling him what to do with it. So, I I think this is fascinating. This is this is definitely setting up to what looks like to be a big El Dukeru between him and Eisner. Yeah, but you know, my big concern is why am I getting a lot of advertisements for bras? And intimate I, wear. I, I don't know what you're I don't know what you're looking at on your spare time. It's well so, I mean it's it's definitely I mean, not women's underwear. I mean, well then again, I can <laughs> o- again I can only reiterate. I don't know what you're looking at in your spare time. That's so weird. <laughs> I, I mean, the stuff only generates ads based on what you search, so No, I have an ad blocker. That's just the weird thing. Apparently it's not working. I'm definitely not looking at moccasins. That are serve as gun holsters? Uh, yeah. I, ser- looking- I don't even own a gun that would necessitate having a gun holster. So, okay. Anyways, hey, Ryan Reynolds has reportedly agreed to Justice League Snyder cut cameo. Oh, sorry. We're getting, we're getting to other you're get You're getting off the rails again. We're getting into, we're, we're getting into we're, DC, which I know we're talking, you hate. We're talking George Lucas news here. I will not allow DC information to upstage George Lucas news. Why don't you get George, George, why, don't you, why don't you get George Lucas on the show? Why don't you call? Why don't you call your old buddy and see if he's interested in being an all fets are off on a Monday night? Get George Lucas on the show. Get George Lucas on the show, I'll, I, and I'll try to get Taika Waititi, homeboy. I tell you what. Why don't Why don't we just get good old DJT on the show if we're gonna do that? Who? DJT. Who is? Uh... I refuse to use the full name. I won't do it. Okay. Uh... Just who would be famous enough right now with the initials of DJT? Um. Oh my gosh! Come on. Donald Trump. Yeah. See, if we get him on the show, I'll get George Lucas on the show. Oh, yeah. His middle name is J. Or J. It's his yes. middle initial. I mm-hmm. got it. Um. Uh, no, thank you. <laughs> no, you, you. You don't sound. You don't sound very enamored about a George Lucas seven, eight, and nine. Well. You're complaining about seven, eight, and nine. So if George I'm Lucas complaining about to... eight. I'm, cl- I'm complaining about eight. I want Colin Trevorrow. For all of them. Wait a minute. Are you saying that you want Trevorrow over Lucas? Well, it's a direct, but I want Lucas' involvement. I'm pretty sure Lucas is going to want to handle both directing and production, as he did with one, two, and three. Maybe. So that pretty much puts Trevor out of the mix. That was a long time ago, man. 
23 years Exa- ago. Exactly. He's been sitting around doing a whole lot of nothing. You don't think he's going yeah, to take he's over? Enjoying, he's enjoying retirement. He's hanging okay, out with well, his family. So now, stuff, you know? now he's got all this pent up energy. I can't see him wanting to divvy up responsibilities. He's going to want to do it all. But he did that with he did that with uh, with Empire Strikes Back, and he yeah did that with got a better Empire. product, didn't we? we? We did. I mean, okay, well, now, but uh, it's obvious he doesn't feel that way anymore. If he had, he would have done that with one, two, and three, which he didn't. But that was the, that was the best. That, that was the best. That was the best move ever in Hollywood. Was being the being the creator of of, of Star Wars, and then getting Irvin Kershner to do Empire Strikes oh, Back. We yeah. know that that was. He was, but he again he didn't follow that model with one, two, and three. He was originally one, going to. He was originally one, going to. Yeah, and he didn't, and then we ended up with, well, what we ended up with, and there you had it. Yeah, that there we have it. And now we're gonna have an Obi Wan series coming from it. Well, we didn't have any news this week on that. So no, I mean, well, I mean, what what else can we really say? I mean, unless we get Ewan McGregor, the man himself, on the show. So you are not excited about George Lucas doing his seventy and nine? He's not gonna. Do, it's not gonna happen. There's no reason to get excited. Why wouldn't it happen? It's just it can't. Why? How Disney's not gonna let that happen. They're not going to let... They're just not. They're going to be like, look, we've put all this money, all these resources into 7, 8, 9. We're going to have this part of the continuity. Blah, blah, blah. All the characters. I mean, he would completely redo it. Those characters... Ray, Finn, Oscar Isaac. I don't even know what his... Who, what's his name in the movie? Oh! It's so forgettable. Um, Poe! Yeah, see, Poe Dameron. It's so, it's so forgettable. You know? I mean... <laughs> It, it, you just not you won't have those characters in the movie. I don't think. No, I, I don't believe they'll be in the movie either because it'll be his seven, eight, and nine. But, but when he originally imagined it, he wanted it to be like thirty years later, after Return of the Jedi. Well, it and just half. so happens that this one was thirty years later. Yeah, but... and, and then they, yeah, but he wanted, you know, Luke Skywalker, Leia, Han Solo, but. Who do we not have anymore? We don't have Leia. You know, you just really can't do that unless you go full digital on her. Um, Are you trying to tell me that George Lucas cannot find a way around this slight problem? Well, I think you can because look what they did with Peter Cushing in um, uh, Rogue One. Well, I'm, which I'm was that he could amazing. find a way to do this without Leia. Is what I'm saying. No, I don't think you would do it without Leia, but I think you would do it. In, I think you would do and it I in that way. Would. Yeah, because I mean, in even in uh, Rise of Skywalker, um, Carrie Fisher's daughter played her when she lifted up her mask and they were doing the Jedi training. That was Carrie Fisher's daughter. Yeah, but they digitized Carrie's face over her. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I think you can do that again. You did that. You did it with Peter Cushing. Why couldn't you do it with uh, with Carrie Fisher? I mean, I think you could. You know, but you got to do it now, man. I mean, we just saw that. I mean, Harrison Ford's seventy eight years old. You know. You're you're and you're you're losing out. You're you're losing on time. You know we don't all live forever, but uh, you know he's th- fine. He's doing another Indiana Jones. He's got plenty of juice left. Yeah, dude. How is that happening, bro? I don't get it. But I, I was don't perfect. you say that I you was. Cannot do Jones I know, anymore. but I was perfectly don't fine. Don't you with, say it? I was perfectly fine with them being done with the Last Crusade and that being it. That being the last I ever saw of Doctor Henry Jones Jr. I was well, they totally wanted to do it. one more, and they, it ended up being Crystal Skull, and then it ended up being so bad yeah. that they have to fix it. So, yeah, not and, and bringing Shia LaBeouf in that movie, pff, why, dude? It just wasn't even a, it wasn't necessary. But um, anyways, man, do we're or we're we're done to, <laughs> for tonight. It's 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 ten thirty, and it's a school night. Uh, the Tuscan Toast has uh, work in the morning. Okay. But anyways, uh, yeah, sorry you were late. Uh, sorry you were having some technical issues, but uh, we'll, we'll work on that. We'll see what we can get, we can, we can do. I know there's another, another platform that we can use uh, to make this a little bit easier, but um, uh, no big deal. I was able to kind of, you know, talk it out a little bit for the fans and maybe they got bored. I don't know. 
<laughs> but anyways, you got on board. Uh, but yeah, so anyways, we, we went over uh, the sequel trilogy to stay in place, sort of. The plot details for Rian... I don't even want to say his full name. Uh, John Boyega wants more Star Wars. I know he wants in more. Filoni not done with lovable clones. Bad Batch, the A-team of Star Wars. Let's see it. Let's do it, man. And George Lucas is entertaining doing his own versions of 789. I'm for it. I mean, I don't think it's ever going to happen. You didn't sound too thrilled about it. I know, I am. I am. I, I mean, I really am. I mean, you know, getting away from the, the train wrecks of, of The Last Jedi, I mean, would make anybody really excited, and especially me. Um, but uh, I don't think it'll happen. If it does, you know, color me surprised and color me wrong, which I tend to be from only time to time. Um, but we'll see. But I called it on Bad Batch. Remember, it's you saw it. More you than saw it. Time, but yes, you, you did saw call it. it. You saw it, and all fets are off. And you saw it first that the Bad Batch would get their own show. And sure enough, they did. For I am clairvoyant and of all knowing. Anyways, Brian, uh, it's been a good show. Um, yes, yes. Well, uh, it was it was good to be back. I know I took um, I took last week off, but I feel much better now. Thank you very much. Uh, and actually, we had a fan on Facebook. I don't really know exactly who it is. My mom sent me a text, mes- uh, a text message and said, I'm not on Facebook, uh, that someone was asking how I was feeling. Much better. Thank you very much for your concern. Um, and uh, we're, we're glad that you check out the show and uh, are worried about little old me. So, um, Brian, you stay safe out there in San Antonio. I know you and I are both kind of in the hot spots of our respective uh, states yeah. of Texas and Florida. Um, but uh, let's stay safe. We want to make sure that we give a, a really good product to our fans out there. And uh, for those of y'all who didn't catch it first, remember to check out Bad Customs. The link is in the description of the YouTube. Yes. And she is, uh, Brianna is our, our sponsor, and we're really proud to have her on board and part of the team. Uh, we lo- we love what she does. She does great work. Please check her out. Um, yes. And uh, get something cool. It'd be great. That, those those things that she does, Brian. Those are great birthday presents. You know, especially for somebody that has everything. Um, get them something. They're great custom- for anything. Man. Yeah. Get them custom sure. made. You know, you can get graduation stuff put together. I mean, she can do anything. I was looking at her Instagram page the other day. Absolutely fantastic and beautiful work. So. Um, it was great to have her on board last week. Uh, we'd love to have her again with, uh, so she can showcase some of her new stuff. Um, but please check out her Instagram and her Facebook page and hit her up if you're interested in uh, having a tumbler done or any little trinkets or gift items done. Uh, so, Brian, right. ne- next week we'll talk. Um, we'll have some new topics. Maybe we'll have some more information on Bad Batch. And, hey, man, we'll, we'll go from there. That's right. All right. So, All right. Ready to yub-nub out of here? We're going to yub-nub out of here. All right. Hey, thanks, everybody. Everybody stay safe, and thanks for checking out All Fets Are Off.